Hello and welcome to That Rust Life. Today we are back over here at the Abandoned Flour Mill Project. Anthony on his YouTube channel, Hardcore Fab, has been working really hard on everything on that side of the wall and the other side over there where the metal shop is going to be um, and our uh, maintenance area. So he's already gotten some vehicle lifts up on Facebook Marketplace. We scored some really cool metal cabinets from somebody who was doing a kitchen remodel. Got those over there and everything is looking really cool over there, but we have been just kind of ignoring this area. And this is going to be the future area where the public can come in. It's kind of the customer area. It's where we're gonna be running our car lot out of and just kind of my office space. Uh, I like open concept as much as the next guy, and this place is definitely big, open concept, it's beautiful. But um, I do need an office space that's just for me, that can be behind closed doors and locked. Um, also, uh, I don't think anybody wants an open concept bathroom, so we still need to put that in as well. But today is all about getting this place cleaned up and getting it ready so we can map out where we're going to put everything and how we want it to be. Anthony and I are both really bad about going to auctions and uh, marketplace and everywhere else and buying things. And anytime we do, we don't have any other place to put it. So it kind of comes in here and this is kind of the dumping ground for everything. So we got to quit doing that so that we can work in here. So I got to get all this stuff cleaned out. Speaking of uh, marketplace and buying stuff, there was an auction recently that had a whole bunch of scissor lifts. And we're at that point where we really kind of need one. I mean, we've been using that forklift to get up and down. It's, OSHA wouldn't approve, but we wanted actually a good scissor lift and we were able to score one. At least we hope it was a good one. It was an internet auction. We haven't brought it home yet, but hopefully it's as good as it seems. We did all right on that. But, um, once we have that, we'll be able to work on our ceilings better, doing any repairs and painting that we need to do. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Uh, we should have that here by the end of this week, so I'll be able to show that to you guys. Uh, in the meantime, though, enough talk. I guess it's time for me to get busy and get this place cleaned up.
Because I found the snake. He's behind this piece of wood. He was up there, but he got me. He's trying to get away. Outside. It's a nice day outside today. Much better than being in here. Look at that. You lost your tail at one time. See, life is hard. So, yeah, distractions, distractions, distractions. But fun distractions, all the same.
I shut everything off to go to lunch and when I came back I forgot to turn the camera back on but I think you guys got the idea of what I was doing here got that all done now we can replace this section with sheetrock still have this little bit here to do but I think most of that is actually gonna wash off with the power washer and then maybe just leave a little bit of concrete which might be kind of a retro Tuscan feel to have some concrete mixed in with the brick. I don't know, it might be cool, might not be. If it's not, then I'll just take it off. And Anthony came in and got up here and messed around with the cracking in the beams up high, chiseled all of that off. So now I can power wash it and then we can uh, get some stuff to patch that in and repair it. So that's all good to go. And we got most of the stuff around these windows done so that we can trim them out and see what that's like. Just getting anxious to get power washing done in here so we can have the electrician come back in and get us some power. I think anything else that's left I can probably clean and do without a pressure washer. It's here! Anthony went and picked up the scissor lift. I'm so excited about it, it's awesome. Of course, now we have the logistical challenge of how we're gonna get it off of there. I wanna see if it'll lift it all the way up. Okay, but it's still gonna fall off the trailer on the back. I'm only gonna get the front tires off. It's gonna get it to where I'm up against the forklift. Hmm. You need longer forks. You need more forklift. And you need more forklift. A sketchy, sketchy idea at best. Sketchy. Oh no, you're gonna have to drive that at the same time I drive this. You're gonna run over me? Uh no. And you're not going to pull out from underneath me either, so that neither one of us die. Put that on a tripod. It says don't drive on uneven surfaces. So you got to keep me flat the whole time. <laughs> so scared. Which way goes this way? Is that this way? Yes. So just a little bit. Put the handle down. Maybe just have the handle down. I might be able to push. We'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now I am going to speed this video up a little bit because I don't think anybody wants to watch 30 minutes of us figure out how to get a scissor lift off of a trailer. But it is kind of funny and interesting to watch Anthony have to work through this logistical puzzle as that forklift is 3,500 pounds and given the equipment that we have available to us, it really was something. Yeah, if, uh, if you do, if I put this up, will that lock it? Uh, no, probably not. Okay. Yeah, it's going to put it up. Let's see what happens.
No, I can't handle the thing without being on top of that. You might be able to just drag it back with that. Go ahead and put the handle down. Be ready to put the handle up if you see it starting to roll off, you know the trick. But I can't see the tire. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. It really does need that wheel freed up. You want me to try that again and screw it further? Stand back. So the batteries in that forklift are all but junk, and they won't pull the forks out of there with it at such an angle. And the mass doesn't tilt one way or the other like a regular forklift, so it's got me kind of bound up right there. This is going to lift it up enough, hopefully, to be able to get the forks out. If we can get the forks almost out, then we can let it down to the ground, pull it, or lift it back up a little bit, pull that out, slide the forks out, go to the other side, pick it up, and get the pallets out. Hopefully.
This is a perfect example of having the right tool for the job. Now, normally we have access to a really large forklift that could have picked that machine up off the trailer and set it down. But that big loader with a forklift on it doesn't fit through our garage door. And while well, you see the restraints of our battery powered forklift and its inability to lift anything that heavy, and this scissor lift happens to have those really nice indoor tires that aren't equipped to drive around outside. So here we are. <laughs> okay. What you see here is our battery powered forklift has gotten stuck on the uneven pavement on the other side of our garage door. And Anthony thought we could use our pallet jack to manipulate the forklift to get it unstuck and be able to do what we need to do. And this is just a perfect example of how things can go awry on even the simplest task and make your whole day kind of blow up and something that should have only taken 20 minutes suddenly takes an hour and a half. But we did work through it, as you'll see here. And one way or another, well, you can watch what happened. Oh, that's interesting. Now I'm stuck and I can't get that off of here. He's a creative thinker. Hey. You're a creative thinker.
Look at how snazzy. This would make doing everything we've done so far so much better if we would just have this to begin with. <laughs> Thank goodness for auctions and new stuff. <laughs> and it works. So yeah, this is how we looked. Super excited about it. But now, what I've got left to do is this pit that goes down to the vault room. I've got to get all this stuff cleaned out down here. Anthony went to go get uh, the torch because we're actually going to have to torch off this vault door. It's pretty rough shape. We'd like to keep it. After we get it down and off, we'll see if we can reuse it for something else. Gosh, that's dark. You can't even see. But anyway, when, no matter what we use it for, it's not going to be for the door for this room anymore. So it's got to go. So he went to go get that while I cleaned this out. Anthony has shown up with the cutting torch. So hopefully I've got that cleared off enough where he's going to be able to get to all the uh, hinges.
This is so rusted and crusty that it's not the other one like cutting anything. It's just melting and popping rust off. now. That's new. See that? Yeah. There you go. The whole outside of the door skin was like that too. I pulled most of that off. Yeah. That's the reason why we're not saving the door, at least in this configuration like it's it. <laughs> See, it's thinner, it's lighter. It's <laughs> good because I'm not really looking forward to trying to figure out how I'm gonna lift it up out of here. Yeah. <clears throat> Hammock starter. What's left of one? I have two. There's like six of them over there in this car, and the tips are wore off of every one of them. So we went and got some tips right before we started shooting the video, and none of them fit on any of these strikers. So, yeah, here we are. That one seems that good, one though. That one still seems to have a little tiny bit of light left in it. I don't know how. Do you think it's cast? <clears throat> it makes sense. So yeah, what I think I think this hinge part right here is cast, and it's in between two layers of metal that's in this framework on this uh, jam, and it's so crusted and rusted that I'm through the first layer, and then the back layer is separate from the hinges now, I believe, because the door's moving so much. You about got it. About got it. It's this little bit left up in here, I think, because the bottom looks like it's free. So maybe if I cut out a little bit more of this, we can get something to happen or I can cut down it or something. So they were trying to make it so uh, it couldn't be 
It's like they were trying to not get, let people get in there very easily or something. Right. They did, it, they did a good job making a vault door. Now what do we guess this door weighs? <laughs> guess, guess you'll know better than me. You need all this stuff moved out of your way? I think if we have some blocks of wood, then I can rock it back and forth on some wood, and then you can get on the other side and stack it underneath there, and then we'll slowly lift it up, like the Egyptians did to build the pyramids. So this door is two layers. There's probably one, I think they're both the same size or was originally both the same size. It looks like probably 3 16 clay. So outside 3 16 inside 3 16 And then it's got all kinds of webbing across it. And then, I don't know, you guys probably can't see it. It's also got the shafts that go through here that would actually lock the door when it would, you know, get the handle turned. And those are probably an inch or an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth solid shaft. And there's, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five of those, I guess. And then a bunch of bar stock and everything all through here. So this thing has got to be, got to be 400 pounds anyways. And big and awkward and rusty and crusty. So, yeah, I think we can shove some blocks back and forth and get this thing where it'll work its way up the steps and get it out of here, hopefully. That's my plan anyways at the moment. Then after we get this thing out of here, I can go ahead and take a torch and cut all the rest of this garbage out of this opening here. and We'll just chuck that because it's all rusty and none of that's usable. Julie's got a bunch of blocks there, so that should work. <laughs> That's a pretty cool vault door. I wish we could have saved it for that door, but as you can see, it's pretty bad. But maybe we can salvage it for something. Now the 3 16 plate is an 8th inch plate. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can do that to the other side as well, and then we'll get even thinner still. And the, and the inch and a half bar stock is now inch. <laughs> No more vault door. Well, 
it's been a better part of the week, but I'm finally ready to power wash the place. And it's a good thing too, because I got a phone call from Noah. He's with Custom Security Solutions, and he let us know that the rest of our security equipment has come in. So he wants to get in here to install the glass break and the door alarm and all that kind of fun stuff. And he needs to have it in here, and I'm glad it's not going to be all wet and muddy when he gets here. So that's going to work out nice. We already have, of course, the cameras on the outside of the, uh, the building and, and everywhere else. And um, I will tell you that we can see those cameras. So if you're one of those people who have been coming around here, we've seen you and it's been interesting. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Anyway, um, on to power washing. I'm sure you guys don't wanna watch me do all of that. If you do, I'm going to leave a link right here to the video that we did power washing the rest of the place and I'll let uh, Google tell you which video is most interesting to you right up here and right here I'm going to put a subscribe button and if you enjoyed this and you want to learn more about this old place and watch the renovations unfold please hit that subscribe. Thank you!